uh, brachial plexus, my special way of drawing the brachial plexus. You just draw one line across the top, one line across the bottom, you draw a dotted line down the middle, you draw an X up on top, you draw a Y across the bottom, I don't know why I call it a Y. You put a little fork in there, draw in your M, one on top, one on the bottom, five, six, seven, eight, one. And this is radial, axillary, muscular cutaneous, median, and ulnar. And there's your brachial plexus. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to immediately erase it and do it again. Because it's your ability to re replicate this over and over again by yourself so that you can trace problems in the brachial plexus. Line across the top, line across the bottom, one down the middle that's broken, X on top. Oop, getting all sloppy. Work that one, this comes this way, you make the M. You draw one on top, one on the bottom, five, six, seven, eight, one. Radial, axillary, muscular, cutaneous, median, and ulnar. Now once you get good at this, and you can draw this over and over and over again, then you start adding in the little details. And the little details are suprascapular nerve, medial brachial cutaneous and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerves, the one, two, three nerves that are the upper, middle, and lower subscapular nerves. The nerve that comes off the top cord and the nerve that comes off the bottom cord that are actually connected together that are the lateral pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve. And you start over again. And the more detail you can add, the easier the basic drawing becomes. The basic drawing is, it becomes what you're actually going for and you can add on these details, which is why I can tell where to look for each one of the nerves that are difficult to find because I know where they have to come off. On your M, muscular cutaneous, median, and ulnar. Right? Same thing. So now you can just go on and say, okay. One, two, three. Upper subscapular, middle subscapular, and lower subscapular nerves. The middle subscapular nerve is the thoracodorsal nerve. And so when you ask me, well, I can't find the thoracodorsal nerve. I know you have to follow the radial and the axillary nerves back to where they meet to become this, which is the posterior cord. And on the posterior cord, you'll find these three nerves coming off. I know that if I'm looking for the medial brachial cutaneous and medial antibrachial cutaneous nerves, that they come off the cord, which means I have to find the M first, and right off the ulnar nerve where the M uh, stops, there you're going to find the medial brachial cutaneous first and the medial antibrachial cutaneous. And that the lateral pectoral nerve and the medial pectoral nerve, which are named for which cord they come off of and not where they are anatomically, that those two are connected so that they're coordinated, so that the pectoralis major muscle, which is innervated by both of those nerves, moves together through the innervation of those two nerves. And then the suprascapular nerve comes off there. So I know you've got to get all the way down to the root system, right? Because this is roots, trunks, divisions, cords, and branches. Now, why do I draw the radial and axillary nerves ending right there? And the reason I do that is because tucking right into this hole is the axillary nerve. The axillary nerve is behind the M, but in front of both the radial and the axillary nerves. So when you go looking for the, the brachial plexus, you're going to see the M, which is the easy thing to find, right? And the M is going to be laying on top of the axillary artery. And if you move the axillary artery underneath it, you'll find the radial nerve and the axillary nerve. The radial nerve being the bigger of the two of those. Okay? And that's how you trace these questions. 
a trace, trace question would be a guy hits his shoulder while falling off an ATV and pulls off the fifth root. Which of these nerves does it not affect? Well, the fifth goes into the muscular cutaneous. The fifth goes into both the radial and axillary. But the fifth cannot get to the ulnar. And so your ulnar nerve strength would be normal. All of the other nerves would be affected when you cut this rootlet. Okay, and that's what the trace questions are that they put on exams. I took the ER boards just last year, and I had to draw this up in the corner of one of my questions about a nerve question, a nerve root problem in both what's called Herb's palsy and Klemke's palsy. But you understand this? So, I'll just leave that up. Uh, the next thing is the hand game. All right? Um, for the whole upper limb, important notes. One, the shoulder is held onto the whole body by all of those scapular sling muscles we talked about, rhomboids and uh, levator scapulae, pectoralis minor, all of those muscles that hold it down so it doesn't move so that you can move your shoulder. Okay, the um, abduction of the shoulder is carried out by uh, the deltoid, which is axillary, along with the teres minor, which is also axillary nerve, right? So then we get into the arm, and the muscles of the anterior arm are biceps brachii, brachialis, and cracobrachialis, all of which are musculocutaneous. So everything here is musculocutaneous. Everything back here is radial. Everything on the front of the forearm is median and ulnar. Everything on the back of the forearm is radial again. In the hand, it becomes median and ulnar again. But in the forearm, it's mostly median. And one and a half muscles are ulnar. In the hand, it's mostly ulnar. And only five muscles, one half loaf, are median. And so if you learn all the ones that are median in the hand, and then learn the ones that are ulnar in the forearm, you only have to learn a few muscles and you're done. You learn six muscles in the arm and you know the entire arm. Because everything on the back of the arm, radial. Everything in the anterior arm, brachium, is all musculocutaneous. Here, one and a half muscles, the flexor carpi ulnaris and the flexor digitorum profundus, half of it, are ulnar. Everything else is median, so you can just say, what is the pronator teres innervation? And you go, I don't know, so it must be median, right? Because I know the ulnar is flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus, so it must be ulnar, right? Those are ulnar, so I'm sorry, they, they must be median. In the hand, you learn one half loaf, which is... One half of the lumbricals, opponens, abductor, and flexor. So one half of the lumbricals. Okay, and then the opponens, abductor, a B ductor, and the flexor, pollicis. So one half of the lumbricals, lumbricals are the puppet muscles you guys learned today, right? Puppet muscles. They go from the flexor digitorum profundus tendon to the extensor expansion of the finger uh, on, the on the same digit. So it wraps around the inside of the finger, and so it causes extension of the in interphalangeal joints of the fingers while causing flexion at the metacarpophalangeal joint. That's what the lumbricals do. That motion just like that. So the, these two lumbricals are median. The other muscles that are meeting are the opponens, abductor, and flexor pollicis. Okay? And I'm going to teach you all the hand muscles in just a minute. But that's how you remember, that's median. So everything else, the dorsal interosseae muscles, the palmar interosseae muscles, the hypothenar eminence, which is the one half, uh, the other one half loaf, lumbricals, opponens, abductor, and flexor digiti minimi 
and the adductor, ADD, adductor, pollicis. All of those muscles are ulnar. Do you want to learn all those? Or you just want to learn the one half loaf that are median? And everything else is, I don't know, ulnar. Okay? And the forearm, one and a, uh, one and a half muscles. Flexor carpi ulnaris and flexor digitorum profundus, half of it. Everything else is median. Okay? And that way, if you learn the nerves this way, all by themselves, that way you don't have to sit there as you go down the arm and try to memorize the innervation of each single one. Learn them like this, and it's just one big question. Axillary, muscular cutaneous, radial, mostly ulnar, sorry, mostly median, one and a half ulnar, mostly ulnar, four, only six muscles are median, which is one half loaf. Okay? Five muscles. <laughs> But, okay, so now you want to learn the muscles, right? You want me to run through the muscles? Okay. Yes, please. Let me take off my shirt and show you the muscles. Ready for the muscles? <laughs> okay, so on the upper arm, the biceps, the brachii muscle, the brachialis muscle, and the cracobrachialis, they all cause um, flexion of the uh, shoulder. Actually, biceps brachii and cracobrachialis cause flexion of the shoulder. And then flexion of the elbow is brachialis and biceps brachii. Biceps brachii from the superglenoid tubercle of the scapula to the, and the um, short hiss from the coracoid process, um, to the radial tuberosity of the radius. And I make everybody do this. You grab your muscle and you make a muscle, make it nice.